everybody. So at this point, uh, you should have your monster on your embroidery hoop and embroidered away. Um, I have completely finished embroidering mine. Some things to point out are that um, his little tongue hasn't been made yet. We're going to be talking about that in this video because um, that's going to attach to the front. So that will be attached later. His little arms have little French knots on them. And the patch that is around his eye has been cut out of this area right here. But I did keep this entire piece intact um, so that it would be easiest for me to continue keeping tension right here that is tightness across that hoop. So you can see that I just cut that out like so. Um, all right, so now we're gonna talk about how to actually put your fronts and your backs together because you know you, you can't make a full stuffed animal without a front and a back to him. Um, all right, so first things first, I need to make sure that I have outlined my pattern in that Sharpie marker um, so that I can see it from this back side right here all the way around. If I cannot see it from the back side, then I'm gonna have incredible difficulty doing what I'm about to do. Um, so I have my front side piece right here. It has all my little pieces on there. And I have my back side piece right here that is just a plain color. There are two sides to your fabric at this point. There is the right side and there is the wrong side. You can think of the wrong side as the back. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking our two pieces of fabric and we're gonna be putting them right sides together. So the outsides for our final creature are going to be on the inside of this little sandwich that we make. All right. Now, because I've used Sharpie marker, I can still see the outline of my guy. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stitching around most of this with a back stitch. Now, I say most. So what you're going to do, get some kind of marker, highlight, or something or other, and you're going to highlight a section at least an inch long, maybe a little bit more, that you are going to leave open. And in this case, I'm going to leave open this section right here at the bottom of his foot. That's where I'm gonna be able to turn him back inside out whenever I'm done stitching around. So I'm gonna start stitching here, come all the way around to the edge, and then I'm gonna stop there. This will be left open so that one, I can flip him back inside out, and two, I have a place to stuff him. And I will use a ladder stitch to close that back up. I need to do the same for my arms. Now, any kind of arm or leg, the easiest place to leave open is just wherever it's gonna attach to your body. So I'm gonna leave these spots open right here and right here, and I'm just gonna stitch around the rest. So here's what I'm gonna do to set this up. Now, these two pieces of fabric should not move apart from one another. I want them to stay, to, to stay where they are. And I'm just gonna double check that I have color everywhere that I need color, which looks like I just about do. I might need to smidge scooch it over a smidge right here, otherwise I might not be able to right there. Yeah, all right, okay. And now I'm gonna load up this fabric like I normally would. I'm gonna have my solid hoop, my solid hoop uh, on the table. This is gonna go on top and anything that I wanna stitch is gonna go inside that circle. So I'm gonna start with this guy because he's the most complex one. I'm going to put my outer hoop over top, if I can make it loose enough. Oh my gosh, I'm tightening it the wrong way. Spin. Tightening it back down. Now the trick to making sure this works is again to tighten it, but uh, to pull all my fabric taut, but I'm grabbing both pieces of fabric at the same time and treating them as one piece. That way they'll slide around together without losing the position that I put them in earlier. And I'm just gonna give them a good tug on all these sides to make sure that it's nice and tight. And again, this entire outline that I'm about to stitch, all of that is completely within the bounds of the circle. Now I already have my needle threaded, just like I normally would with my needle on one side with an overlap of about that much string that I'm gonna be holding on to, and the other side has a knot. And I'm just gonna pick either side of this to start at. I'm gonna start over here. And I'm just gonna backstitch all the way around. The trick to making this look good is to make sure that your back stitches are very small. Not infinitesimally tiny, just very small. So you can see my needle here is only about 
two of these wide? That seems like it's gonna take forever. And the answer is yes, you are correct. This is gonna take forever to backstitch around. But if you make these very wide apart, oh dear gosh. If you make these stitches very wide apart, remember this is what's holding all your stuffing in. And each one of these stitches is essentially a very small hole. And we want each one of these very small holes to be very small, small enough that stuffing isn't gonna come out of them later. So if you have a very big stitch, that's going to act as a bigger hole along the side, which means that it is much more likely for your stuffing to come out later. It also helps you if you have a very sharp turn, for example, if you have a pointy horn or something like that. Um, so for example, on this pattern over here, I have these little pointy cone shapes on the top. If I have very big stitches right here, this won't hold together very well. Smaller stitches works better, especially around pointy ends. Um, otherwise, again, stuffing will just pop all out and it will be very, very sad for you. So remember, back stitch. You come up a little bit away from your previous stitch and then you go backwards to go down. Do not do a running stitch for this. A running stitch is too weak. It is much more easy to fall apart on you or to break on you. A running stitch does not hold any strength. A back stitch holds a lot of strength. And since this is gonna be holding all of our stuffing in, we want it to be very strong. All right, so I'm just gonna continue back stitching around this guy for what's gonna feel like three days. Um, and whenever that is done, I will check back in with you and you can see what it looks like and how we're gonna flip him inside out and how to finish him off by stuffing him and how to close that with our ladder stitch. All right, so I have done my thing where I traced around my Sharpie line with a back stitch almost all the way around. I have left small openings on each of my pieces. Um, you can see on the back side that I am in my blue area. You can see where my little openings are because they're not all covered, but you know, beside the point. All right, so the next step is to actually cut them out. Do not cut them out first. Don't do that. It will make your life so sad. All right, so first I'm just gonna start with a rough chop where I'm getting them apart. That'll make it a little bit easier for me to cut all these pieces out. But this is extremely, extremely rough and you don't technically have to do this. I just prefer to. So I'm gonna come over here, get this chopped. All of that's useless. Let's get these two apart. The things that you wanna double check as you're going is that you're not accidentally cutting through any of your back stitching. That will literally undo your back stitch. And then the next thing I'm gonna do before I start doing anything else is I'm gonna come around my edge just one time and make sure that I don't have any strings tucked in. So all of that's good. Right here I have a string tucked in, so I'm just gonna untuck it. That one's all good. Over here I've got that string tucked under and that string tucked under. If it is tucked underneath that back stitch right now, it could potentially stick out later. So we're just gonna make sure that all of those are on the outside now, which will be the inside later. All right, so next thing I gotta do is I actually gotta trim up a little bit closer. Trying to have all this hanging off whenever I'm doing what I need to to flip this guy inside out would be a pain in the patootie. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna cut around. Now note that since these are just regular scissors, um, they're good scissors, but they're regular scissors, I need to find the best spot for cutting before it's gonna cut fabric. Fabric does not like to be cut by crappy scissors. So whenever you're cutting fabric, just make sure that you're working in the one spot of your pair of scissors that works really well. I'm gonna keep going around and around. If I had a very skinny thing, Say for example, I'm working on the tip of a horn. I would need to get maybe even closer than this to, uh, to my sewn line right here. I might need to get very, very close, something more like this far away. I'm still not going through my stitching, but I am much closer if I cut right here. But since most of mine are long curving lines that aren't very wobbly and not very pointy, I'm gonna go ahead and keep them a little bit further away. 
If you can keep them a little further away, do. If you have to get a little bit closer, you can. But the, cl uh, the closer you get to this backstitched line, the more likely it is that you're going to end up um, having it fray apart as you flip around. Um, also, another thing about fraying apart, note that my back stitching is very small stitches. Especially if you have a sharp corner or curve, you need to have very small stitches. Um, they don't need to be microscopic, but you can see that I got, in my, the width of my thumb, I've got at least three stitches right here um, in the width of my thumb. And I have pretty small fingers. All right, so I'm going to get the rest of these cut out and I will be back with you in a second. All right, so now that this has been cut out a little bit closer, your immediate thought would be, oh, it's time to flip it inside out, but no. We have to do something called clipping corners. If you do not clip corners, areas like this might turn out fine, but areas like this are going to end up very strange and areas that are very tight corners like this are going to crumple in on themselves and it will not look good. Clipping corners just means that you are clipping vents into this hem because it might have to compress or stretch once you flip everything inside out. And so this will allow everything a little bit of room to do that. And so whenever I'm clipping corners, all I do is I come around and I cut in towards my back stitch about every centimeter or so, making sure to get into the furthest corner of any corners. So you'll see that I definitely have one here and right here because that's the furthest edge of this corner and that's the furthest edge of this corner. I am not going to do any clipping where my opening is, otherwise I won't be able to sew that shut later. So I'm just gonna do this all the way around. Now these pencil lines are where you should see them, but I'm not going to do it on most of this. Uh, I'm just going to kind of show you about how far apart they should be. So I'm gonna cut in with my scissors. I'm going to cut as close as I can to my back stitch without getting into my back stitch. So you'll see right here, this stops right there, not hitting my back stitch. I do not wanna hit that side. Sometimes you might wanna do it from this side, especially if this back end is a little bit uh, thicker. Um, so like, especially up here where it stops following a very neat little line, I might wanna clip from this side so that I don't accidentally cut through that one. But I'm just gonna go every three quarter centimeter, centimeter apart or so, getting as close to that line as I can without getting into it. And I'm gonna do that around all of my shapes, including my little tongue that I have set aside over that way. 